Good evening and welcome to this presentation of why I'm a member of the Church of Christ. We are privileged tonight to have with us Brother Bobby Lewis. And we're excited about him being here and making this presentation. And I know he is prepared and looking forward to making this presentation. And these presentations are designed in order to point us to the scriptures so that we can understand why it's important that we examine the Bible with reference to the church and also to ask those questions. Why am I a member of the church? Because it's important to know why we're a member of the church and what are the reasons that the Bible gives us. And so we hope that this will help you in your study and encourage you as well as to give you the information that's important to teach to other people who may not know and understand why we are a member of the Lord's church. In the way of announcements, we want to remember that we will be assembling on Sunday. We have two assemblies, one's masked and one's optional, and that's at 9 and 11. And also this coming Sunday, I want to remind the men that August 9th at 4 o'clock, we will be having our second Sunday business meeting. And this will put us back on track for the regular Sunday, second Sunday meetings, business meetings. And so I want to encourage you to Put that on your calendar to be a part of that. Also, we want to remember Ashlyn Cryer, who is a Marshville High School student who recently suffered stroke. Keep her in your prayers. And there's a card shower and in your bulletin. If you have not gotten it yet, you will see an address where you can send her a card. And I know she will appreciate that so much. Also, we want to remember that this summer series will continue throughout the summer. So please plan to join us each Wednesday night as we participate in this study. And also, remember all of those that are on our sick list. There's many, many, and please remember those folks that are struggling in your prayers. Also, we do have members of the Lord's Church that have contracted the COVID-19 virus. Please pray for them and their families. Some of them are undergoing some difficult times with that virus, and so please pray for them. Also, pray for those members of the church and folks that you know that have lost their jobs or are struggling with difficult situations right now. So let us go to our Heavenly Father and let us pray together. Our gracious Father, we thank you so much for this privilege to bow our heads before you this evening. Father, we're thankful that we can join together in mind and heart and present ourselves, Father, before you humbly, knowing that Father, you're the great God of heaven, that it's only through your mercy and your grace that we even have any hope of salvation, and Father, we're thankful for it. And Father, we know that there's nothing we can do to ever have earned that salvation, so we know that it's only because of your mercy and grace that Jesus went to that cross. And Father, we know we don't deserve it, but we're so grateful for it. And Father, we're also grateful that he provided us a way to be a member of his body, the church. Also, Father, we're thankful that his word enlightens us as to what the nature of that church is and how important it is to be a member of that church that he promised to build. And, Father, we're also thankful that the Bible reveals how we are to work and to worship and also, Father, how to live as a Christian in that body in the church and the fellowship that belongs to Christ. Father, thank you so much for caring for the sick and those that are struggling with their needs. And, Father, we also pray that you will help us, use us to be of service to them and be of encouragement. And Father, we know that our nation is struggling at this time and we also are facing a political year and we pray, Father, that in all things it will be your will and that those who are elected and are in high places, Father, that they will make decisions that will allow us to continue to be your church in the United States in such a way that we can continue to reach out to the world and serve you, Father, but do so without the fear that some have had throughout the ages, Father. But Father, nevertheless, no matter what happens, we pray that we'll always know that you're in control and that even as we face struggles, that you're with us if we stay faithful to you. And Father, forgive us when we fall short. Give us the knowledge to look at ourselves and to repent and to do those things that pleases you. And Father, we once again thank you for this study tonight. Thank you for Brother Bobby Lewis who's making this presentation. It's in your name we pray, or in your son's name we pray. Amen. I'm happy tonight to present to you Brother Bobby Lewis. We're excited because he's going to present a lesson about the importance of the Bible in relationship to creeds. And I think you will learn if you're uh, new to this study and if you've been a member of the church, you'll have those things that are necessary to understand to realize that we don't need anything but the Bible. Isn't that right, Brother Lewis? That's right. Good evening and welcome tonight. Hope everybody out there has had a good 
day and enjoyed the weather and uh, glad that you could all join in tonight and share the study of your work. Tonight we're going to discuss why the Bible is the only creed. Most religious groups have their creeds, confessions, faiths, catechisms, church manuals. The Bible is to be the sole authority in religious matters. If the Bible is not the sole authority in religious matters, then every religious group person would be left to themselves to determine what is right and wrong, thus rendering truth rather than absolute. In our lesson tonight, we're going to consider why the Bible should be accepted as the sole authority in religious matters, why creeds, confession, church manuals should be rejected. If we take a look at the church or at the religious world today, as of 2014, there was 45,000 different denominations or religions in the world, and that was growing daily. The Bible states own state that the Bible states Jesus only built one church. If you'll turn to Matthew 16, 18, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If you look at that again, it says Christ will build my church, not our churches or other churches. It says my church. It's singular. But God knowing man would not be satisfied with his plan. He had Paul write the words that we find in 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 3. If you turn over there with me, we'll read that. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the later, later times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines, demons speaking lies of, of a cross of feet, excuse me, have their own con conscience seared with hot iron, forbidding to marry and condemning to abstain from foods from created to receive with thanksgiving by those who believe and know in the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving for the sanctified of the world of the word of God in prayer. According to the scripture, God has shown us the background for the church. One, the scriptural founder, Jesus Christ. The scriptural time was 33 AD. The scriptural place was in Jerusalem. And the scriptural name was the Church of Christ. The question is, why do we have so many denominations? Well, let's look at the creed. The Bible should be the only sole authority in religious matters. The Bible is inspired word of God. Turn to 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is given, inspired of God, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. If you also turn over to 1 Corinthians 2.13, which says, Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. There are spiritual, spiritual things with spiritual. Also, 1 Thessalonians 2.13, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you receive it not as the word of man, but as in the truth. The word of God, which effectively worketh also in you that believe. So, what is the Bible? In a nutshell, the Bible is the inspired word of God. That's what it teaches us. It's not written by, it's not man's word. But it's inspired of God. The Bible furnishes us completely into every good work. If you look at 2 Peter 1 3, according to his divine power, hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life 
and godliness through the knowledge of human that hath called us the glory excuse me through the knowledge of him that hath called us the glory and virtue. Also in Second Timothy three seventeen again that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The Bible also produces faith in God. In Romans 10, 17, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Ephesians 1, 13, in whom ye shall also trust that ye have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye believe, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So how do we get our faith in God? We get it through the Bible. How do you get it through the Bible? That's where it's our job to open the book, study it, and read it for ourselves. And that's where we develop our faith. You also find in the Bible, the Bible contains the gospel for which men were saved. If you look at Romans 1, 16, for a man, or for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. 1 Corinthians 15, 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein you stand, but which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and how that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. You also look at Second Thessalonians 2.13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, Beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and believe the truth. Wherein you he called you by our gospel through the obtaining of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Also in, in 1 Peter 1.22, Seeing you have purified your souls by obeying the truth through the Spirit, Unto foreign love of the brethren, see that ye one another with a pure heart, fervently being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth abide forever. For all the flesh is as grass, and all the glory of men as the flowers of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower withereth, falleth away. The word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. So we ask ourselves, how do we find the way in which we can be saved? Well, the answer is through reading the Bible and following the commandments of the Bible. They tell you exactly what we need to do to be saved and spend our time with the Lord. When it all comes down to the end, it's our time to go. The Bible is what we're going to be judged by also. Turn to John 12, 48. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Turn to Revelation 20, 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. 
the death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works, and the death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. James also speaks in James 2.12, So speak you, so speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. So when it comes time for judgment, how are we going to be judged or are we going to be judged by? Well, once again, we're going to be judged by the Bible. Are we studying it? Are we following what we're supposed to be doing? Everything that we should be prepared for in life and everything that we should do is written in this book. And it's our responsibility to open our Bibles and read it and study it and know what we need to do. Because when it all comes to the end, that's what's going to count. That's what we're going to be held accountable for. All is going to be said only about the Bible. It contains the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, and the happiness of believers. The histories are true. The doctrines are holy. Percepts are binding and its decisions are immutable. Read it to be wise, believe it to be safe, and practice to be holy. So we ask why creeds and confessions, church mandates, and etc. should be rejected. Uh, well, they're frequently revised because of their imperfections. An example of changes have been made on the marriage of the priest. Uh, the big one in the in the world today is uh, accept, accepting homosexuality, uh, the transgender. Uh, there are so many to mention, but they get changed daily, yearly, to fit the needs of what whatever suits the people that at that time what they want. Uh, while creeds and manuals, etc., go constant change, the Bible continues to live and function because it needs no change. I know uh, I've been to several denominations out here, and uh, I've got a lot of uh, good friends that go. There's an example of the creeds and, and, and the stuff that don't really pertain to the Bible. Uh, I've got one gentleman I've been friends with for years. And he's from around here. Most people would know him. He was raised Baptist. Later on in life, he became uh, evangelical Methodist. And as the congregation he was going to, he started to uh, Split to go different ways. He did. And I worked for this gen with this gentleman for years. Spent a lot of time with him. We've done a lot of talking. So, well, the newest craze when it comes to town, it was the last church that was up here at the old junior high school. I ran into him and I talked to him. And they, they'd been going there. And I asked him, I said, what do you think? And he said, well, he said, I like the atmosphere. He said, it's all right. He said, the one thing I don't agree with is, or I'm not sure about, is the fact that it's run by one man. I said, well, what do you mean by that? He said, well, there's several congregations across the country, uh, but this one man makes all the decisions. And I said, well, you know as well as I do, that's not scripture. Well, what do you think? And he said, well, it all kind of boils down to, I know where I'm at in my salvation. Uh, he said, uh, but they got a real good youth program. He said, my granddaughter and my grandkids have moved back here. and uh, They like it. They do a lot with the youth. The question with that, uh, my only problem with that was, is 
yeah, there's there's worse things your kid could be doing, and they're they're spending time with with other kids, and I'm sure scripture's getting read, but uh, exactly what are those kids being taught? And they're at an impressionable age that uh, as they get older, that's going to be hard to get out of their mind when they discover the truth. So that's where I've got a problem with it. Uh, the kids may be having fun and enjoying it and thinking it's all great, but are they really getting taught what's right? Uh, you know, I've got, it's just, the Bible teaches that the church is to be run or be overseen by the elders what the Bible teaches. And uh, it's not to be run by an organization. It's not run by a preacher. It's not run by one man. But it's governed by elders. And the Bible gives strict guidelines, strict rules on what it takes to qualify. Well, that's one of the things you've got to look at. And uh, today there's got so many, I call them the field good churches. Uh, because... You can go to different ones till you find the one that makes you feel good. You know? And uh, if you talk to some of them, it's like, well, you know, they like our band. we got a good band. And if we get rid of our band, we'll lose the people because that's what brings them in here. Well, if it's not right, it's not right. So whether you're filling your pews or whether you're not, whether you're telling the preacher what he can preach and what he can't preach because you don't want to hurt any feelings. I'd much rather hurt somebody's feelings than I would. I teach him wrong. If you look at uh, while creating manuals, etc., undergo consistent change. The Bible continues to live and function because it needs no change. James 1.25, But those looketh into a perfect law of liberty, continueth wherein, he being not forgetful, pure, but a doer of the work, the man should be blessed in his deeds. We also go over to Galatians 1.6, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there is some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But through we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accused. As we said before, I say it now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than ye have received, let him be accused. Revelation 22, 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the word of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto the plagues that are written in this book. Also in Deuteronomy 4.12, the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. You heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude, only ye heard the voice. Human creeds can change to suit. Uh, you know, uh, some of your doctrines out here control what the preacher preaches. They're not allowed to preach on homosexuality. They're not allowed to preach on marriage and divorce. Uh, they preach on the once saved, always saved. Uh, they've got guidelines on what they preach because they don't want to step on any toes as a lot of them. And uh, so your human creeds, they change them to suit. If somebody's got a problem and they don't like it, then they just change it, change the creed. As with the real church, the creed is the Bible. There's no change in it. It hasn't changed from the 
the beginning of the Lord. It's been the same. It will always be the same. So the only true creed you can really have is what you find in the book. Most human creeds can't be defended. There's a quotation from Benjamin Franklin. First, any creed containing more than the Bible is objectable because it contains more than the Bible. Any creed that contains less than the Bible is objectable because it contains less than the Bible. Any creed differing from the Bible is objectable because it does differ from the Bible. Any creed precisely like the Bible is useless because we have the Bible. There is no need for it if you've got it. And the Bible is an inspired word of God. Those who, com who are committed to human creed cannot defend the Bible. Their position nullifies their claims to the perfection and completeness of the Word of God. Wherever their creed is contrary to Scripture, choice must be made. If you look at Jude 3, Beloved, when I gave you all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye shall earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Kill 1 Peter 3.15 Sanctify the Lord God in your heart and be ready always to give the answer to every man that seeketh you a reason and a hope that in you with meekness and fear. There's a, a lot in the creed, as it said, that uh, you, can't, you can't be defended. There's nothing in the Bible that can't be defended. It's, it's never changed. In any aspect you look at, there's no contradiction. It doesn't change from year to year. It hasn't changed from the beginning of time. It is the one true word and the one true guide that we have. Creeds also can call division contrary to Scripture. 1 Corinthians 1.10, Paul wrote, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Ephesians 4.1 Therefore, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you, you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you were called, with all lowliness, meekness, and long suffering, forbearing one another in love, and desiring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the blood in peace. Human creeds keep religious people divided in different sects. Each creed serves its wall to include and enclose its own inheritance and excludes all others. The only real unity can ever exist is to remove all creeds, manuals, etc., and allow the Bible to be our sole authority. Division is sinful. Once again, you read the words of Paul, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. 1 Corinthians 3, 3, For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions, ye are not carnal, and you walk as man. It's also sinful to walk by different rules. Philippians 
Nevertheless, where you we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Vision promotes infidelity. Look at John 17, 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that there may be one, as though Father art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, and that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Human creeds cause, well, they cause division, they cause infidelity, they cause us to separate. As it said in John, or said in Corinthians there, that, that that's a sin. It all boils down to the Word of God. Everything we need, everything we need to get through our day to get through our walk, the questions we need for our answers in life. Everything's found in this book. But in order to find that, we have to open it. And uh, we can't rely, we can't rely on other people at church. We can't rely on Everything the preacher says, we can't rely on what the teacher says. We have to open that book, and we have to read it for ourselves. And I know some people say, well, I just read it, and I just, it's too complicated. I just don't understand it. Well, I used to be one of those people. If you sit down open mindedly, open heartedly, and really want to know what the word says, you read that and study it. It's not hard to understand. There's a lot of good people out there, and I've got friends that think they're okay, and they may be, it's not for me to judge, but they rely on what they've been told. They don't study for themselves. And I believe that there's some of them that's lost a lot of that. So as Christians, Children of God, it's our responsibility. We're to help those others. If we have trouble, we're to help our brothers and sisters and ask them for help. But the best way you can do it is to open it up and read it yourself. Everything for life that you need is right here. So let me close this. I Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening to what I had to say. And I hope it maybe it makes a difference to somebody out there. If there's anything that any questions that you guys have, anything you need uh, for your faith, if you'll get a hold of somebody at church, we'll be happy to sit down and study with you. If you're looking for a church home, if you're new to the area. Love to have you. As we close this lesson, I just want to thank you for tuning in again. I encourage everybody to read their Bibles and study. Pray for the nation that we've got. As we close this as a prayer. If you would, please pray with me. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day. Thank you for the right and the ability study your word, free from persecution. Well, we thank you for the answers that you've given us, for the sacrifices that you've made. Without that sacrifice and your son, there, there wouldn't even be any need to be. 
We thank you so much. Lord, we pray that you'll be with all those who are sick and on a prayer list. Pray that the prayers that go up to you, they be answered in the way that you need them to be. Lord, we know you've got the plan. Lord, we pray that you'll be with this country and this nation, this turmoil that's going on. We pray that you will reestablish this country. People in a place that need to be. Help us to get turned back towards you as a nation. Thank you for our military, for our civil service, the sacrifice they make daily, Lord. Thank you be with them and their families. Lord, we love you. In your precious holy name we pray. Amen. And I am safe on that beautiful shore, just to be near the dear Lord I adore. Will through the ages be glory for me? Oh, that will be glory for me, glory for me, glory for me. When by His grace I shall look on His face, that will be glory, be glory for me. When by the gift of His infinite grace I am accorded in heaven a praise, just to be there and to look on his face, will through the ages be glory for me. Oh, that will be glory for me, glory for me, glory for me. When by His grace I shall look on His face, that will be glory, be glory for me. Friends will be there I have loved long ago. Joy like a river around me will flow. Yet just a smile from my Savior I know will through the ages be glory for me. Oh, that will be glory for me, glory for me. Glory for me, when by His grace I shall look on His face, that will be glory, be glory. I want to thank Brother Bobby Lewis for that wonderful presentation. And, and Bobby, that was very heartfelt, too. Not only was it informative, but it touched on the, um, the emotional side of it, what it means. And, of course, that's important because one of these days we're going to have to stand before God, aren't we? And we love the, everybody, and we love you if you're listening to this live stream. And we're concerned that everyone will be prepared to meet God. And I appreciate so much Brother Lewis's presentation to make that so clear and to do so with such an emotion because it's not going to matter what I think when I face God it's what he's told me in his word and so I appreciate the encouragement that brother Lewis made to encourage us to read our Bibles if we will just open it and read it those folks that usually say I can't understand it are really those who only start maybe with Genesis 1 read the genealogy or or uh, excuse me Matthew 1 or, or Luke and so forth and and 
Maybe they read through Genesis 1 and they say, I don't understand it. Well, what we can say is just keep reading, right? Keep reading because you can. And the beauty of it is, is you, there are folks that are here as you've seen them doing the presentations thus far that who are willing to sit down with you and to study with you and to help you understand what you're reading. So if we can help you in any way, as Bobby said, please contact us. And so we thank him so much for those, those words he spoke to us this evening. We invite you to join us next week. Brother Clayton King will be making the presentation. And that is going to once more give us knowledge that's helpful for us to understand why we are members of the Church of Christ. Thank you for being a part of this live stream this evening.